Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Turner Syndrome Thursdays. This week, I wanted to talk about another question I got, which kind of made me feel like we should touch on this more. So I got asked if you could have full classic turners and show very few symptoms. And this is a very, very interesting concept within Turner Syndrome or idea or just, it's a very interesting part of Turner Syndrome because it really shows the diversity, it shows the variability, it shows how different each case really has the possibility of being. And I think that's something that's important to understand. And especially as new stuff is coming out, as more cases of it are happening and therefore more diversity is showing than ever before, where you have a ton of different cases happening in a variety of ways with the same diagnosis. And that makes it difficult for parents that are expecting a girl with Turner syndrome or they found out when she was really young and they're trying to figure out what to expect as she gets older, that's really hard to give them advice. Or for a teen girl who finds out that she has it, what is she supposed to expect? Not just for now and what that means for her life now, which is most likely HRT, but what does that mean for the future? What does that mean for having a family? What does that mean for the rest of her life? And so that's why I think it's, it's, an interesting part of Turner syndrome and I think it's an important one to touch on. So the answer to the original question of can you have full classic Turners with showing very few symptoms is yes. That's my case in a nutshell. I have full on classic Turners. Every cell, well the panel that they did, the genetic testing that they did showed the cells they were able to see, which I don't know how many they're able to look at when they do genetic testing, all of the ones that they were seeing that were damaged. So a Turner's girl, obviously not every cell is damaged, otherwise you couldn't survive. So the cases that are that severe are the ones that don't make it. Um, unfortunately, that is another reality to the varying degrees of Turner syndrome. But the cells they could see, the X was completely deleted. There was no cells they saw that were just partially damaged at all. It was either normal or Turner's and classic. The whole second X was missing and it only had one X. And to me, that's kind of always been a confusing part of it. Me and my mom legitimately expected, or not maybe expected, but would not have been surprised in any way if genetic testing showed I was mosaic because I have very few physical symptoms. I have very few physical symptoms, some of which are, I am pretty significantly above the average height of a Turner syndrome woman when untreated and mine was not treated. I think the average is 4'7", four, 4'8", four, and I'm just above 4'11". So I'm, I didn't take growth hormones and I'm significantly over the average for that. I did not have real webbing of the neck. It was more just little stretchier of skin. It was not actual true webbing. Um, I have no heart problems, no thyroid problems, no kidney problems, no real health issues to speak of besides bone and infertility and needing HRT. So I have virtually no physical exterior symptoms that would give me away to anybody. That's why I've been able up to this point to decide who I tell that I have it. I can choose who knows and who doesn't. And so it was a major decision for me when I started talking about it on YouTube and when I made the decision to kind of not come out as having it, but to be more vocal about it and to actually start talking about it. It was definitely a turning point for me. But I am a case where I have classic, but I don't, I don't actually look like I do. And I, I don't have scientific evidence to back this up, but my guess is that that is decided by when in the conception process, the deletion happens. What me and my mom have always called like this little hiccup 
I think I started calling it because that was what she called it when she explained it to me. And this last weekend when I saw her and we were talking about it, she used that word again. And I was like, oh, that must be where I get it from. But anyways, I digress. So from what I can figure, what logically makes sense in my mind is that when that hiccup happens and this first cell that's going to be damaged is damaged, when the damaging begins, that is the point where cells start being affected. Any cells made before that are gonna be perfectly normal. So if that happens later in the conception process, less cells are going to be affected. Less symptoms for that girl. And that is kind of all I've been able to figure out. That's all that has made sense in my mind. That being said, also humans are so biologically diverse that, that we're genetic predisposition to different things and that can play a factor probably in it too. I know for me there are a lot of things that I have medically that are turners but are also in my family medical history so that we can't really know what that would have looked like for me had I not had turners because that's not the only thing contributing to me having that. Like being short, I would not have been tall either way because my family are not tall people, but I wouldn't have been this short. So turners did take it that extra, extra extent. But things like osteoporosis, things like hearing problems, those are things that run in my family anyways and I probably would have had to some degree anyways. And so that's the gray line that I have for like, well, is this really a Turner's thing for me? Or would I have had this anyways? How severe would I have had it if I didn't have Turner's? Those are just questions I'll never have answered. But the main point is, who knows? Turner syndrome is such a varying thing that there's no way of predicting what it's going to do. There's no way of predicting what it'll affect, how badly it'll affect it, and what it might turn into. There's just too much that can't be predicted or figured and that's why you get the diverse extreme cases where somebody has virtually zero symptoms and then somebody has almost every symptom possible and it's very severely affected. And that's why I've always called it a spectrum. That's why I've compared it to things like autism really where where it's it's a spectrum rather than a definitive diagnosis because it's not something like Down syndrome where there's degrees of it, but there's also more of a pattern with Down syndrome than I feel like there is with Turner syndrome. Um, and even with Down syndrome, there's, there's a spectrum. There's more severe and less severe. Um, but generally it's much more similar case to case than Turner syndrome is. And that's why with autism, autism can be very varying depending on where on the spectrum somebody falls. And I think that's really, really how you have to look at Turner syndrome. So that's my long answer. Short answer is yes, absolutely. That is my life. And if you have any specific questions that go under that, let me know. I would love to answer them and even love to look into it more because like I said, I don't have scientific evidence for my hypothesis, but I would love to just understand it better. So my question for you guys is what way is your case of Turner syndrome surprising? In what way is it unique to your story? If you haven't ever shared your story in the comments, I would love to hear them. And specifically what makes your story unique? I feel like every Turner story is extremely unique in its own right and I would love to hear yours. So tell me how your case is unique. And for next week's topic, I think I'm going to delve into a little more of the science with Turner syndrome. So give me ideas for specific scientific concepts to look into or questions about it that you have. And I would love to get those going and get those answered and start looking into them. I love delving into this kind of stuff more where we can understand it better and actually know what's going on with our bodies. Always a good thing. So I hope this helped you. I hope this answered that question. If you have any other thoughts on it, let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, give this video a like and share it with everybody. And if you are not already subscribed to my channel, click the screen and subscribe. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.